Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In the previous episode I showed you how to cut the groove for the shelf and the rebate for the back panel using a router but in today's video I wanted to show you how to do those exact processes but by hand. Let's get going. So grooving and rebating by hand. Now, in the previous project where we made the dovetail box, we covered rebating by hand when we were doing the lid and we used one of these, a rebate plane. We're gonna be doing the same on the back of this cabinet in order to cut that rebate. And I will somewhat skim over the process to avoid saying the same things over and over again. But when it comes to cutting the groove, we haven't done this yet and there is plenty of ways of doing it and I'm going to list some of the ones off the top of my head in this lesson. Now you may or may not have already seen the previous episode where we machined one of these using power tools. We cut this out using a router and a jig and we cut this rebate out using the router table. Even if you're doing this by hand, I'd strongly recommend you go back and watch that video just for continuity's sake. And also in this lesson, we'll be focusing on squaring off the end of this rounded groove as well. Now saying that, because I've already pre-machined out one of these panels, I need to get an exact mirror match of that on the other panel. So I'm gonna be sort of going back and forth in this lesson as well. The first thing that I want to make sure is exactly the same is the length of the groove front to back. Now I've got a stop groove here. So what I can do from the front edge of the cabinet is actually just set my marking gauge to the furthest point of that curve and lock it in place and then I'm just going to scribe that down the front of the other component. That distance that I've just scribed in will be listed on the plans as well but obviously in my case I'm going to have to match what I've already got. So in order to mark out the distance of the groove from the bottom of the cabinet you're going to need to do a little bit of math. All the information required to get this correct is listed on the drawings it just takes a little bit of working out. So the actual draw height is going to be 75 millimeters from this shoulder line here because that's where the component's going to be coming out. So from that shoulder line, 75 millimeters. That means from the end of the cabinet, because this is 15 millimeters in height, that's going to be 90 millimeters from the bottom of the cabinet to the top of the drawer. So this is our shelf component, and I can place that at 90 millimeters to the bottom of the cabinet. However, that is still not correct. The reason for this is because the shelf doesn't just slot straight into the side of the cabinet. There's actually a small tongue on the end of the shelf that is 10 millimeters. So because this is 15 millimeters thick and the tongue is 10 millimeters, that's gonna leave us 2.5 millimeters either side of the tongue on the shelf. Therefore, in actual fact, what we need to do is measure up 90 millimeters to the bottom of the shelf plus another 2.5, which will take us to the bottom of the tongue. So we'll mark that to start with, 92.5 millimeters. And then because the tongue is 10 millimeters, we'll add another 10 onto that as well. And when I'm scratching this second line, I'm not actually putting the ruler on the 10 millimeter mark on that line that I scratched previously. I'm actually setting it down here to 102 0.5, therefore shifting the ruler up 10 millimeters and scratching back there. The reason for this is if you measure from a point to another point and then use that as your new datum surface and keep doing that as you go, then lots of little errors will add up and you'll be majorly out at the end of it. Whereas if you have a fixed datum surface, i.e. this bottom corner, then you're much less likely to have any issues. So just to confirm it, we'll line it up at the bottom again. And we've got 102.5 taking us to that line. And then if we go back 10 millimeters to effectively 92.5, that's where our first line is. So there we go, there is our boundaries. And next we need to square those lines across the width of the cabinet. Remember, we've got a face side and face edge to do this. So here is my face edge, i.e. the front of the cabinet. And this is the face that we squared the ends of the cabinet off of. That means that even if this back edge is slightly tapered and these aren't square to that back edge, the shelf will still be parallel to them because we're referencing off the front of the cabinet. That is really, really important, especially if you've prepared these boards by hand. So there's our first mark. Put the knife into the mark, slide the ruler up to it, and then I've got the marking gauge line that I've scratched in the front, so I'll just start the knife line from there and drag it back. And then the second line, knife into it. Okay, and that's our groove marked out on the front face, and I'm just gonna double check that compared with the one that I've already cut, and it is bang on which is good to see. So the next job is to mark how deep we want that groove to go. And for me, I can do this by simply setting the gauge to the bottom of the groove that I previously cut with a router, which was eight millimeters. 
think it was eight mil. So we set the gauge to that and then on the back of the cabinet, we'll just scratch between those two boundary lines and that will give us the depth of our groove. And then we'll just square those lines round to meet each other. Right, so cutting this groove out, plenty of ways of doing it. For me, my method is gonna be cut to the lines with a saw or maybe slightly away from the lines. Then I'm gonna chisel out what I can. I might even drill out some of it. And then unfortunately, I can't use my router plane to get into the bottom of the groove to clean it out because the cutter in here is too wide to fit in that 10 millimeter groove, which is unfortunate. But it means it will be a very good chiseling tutorial for those of you who don't have access to a router plane and are just working with basic equipment like this. The advantage of this is that it's a groove and it's going to be hidden after assembly anyway. So does it need to look completely clean? Not necessarily. But even if it looks messy, it still needs to be accurate. You don't want a wobbly, loose shelf in this groove. So firstly, let's properly mark the area that we're removing. The lines that I drew on here previously were just sort of rough guidelines for demonstrating the router jig in the previous episode. So I just want to make sure I don't get confused between those and some nice hash lines like this should stop that. So we'll clamp the component down to the edge of the bench and I want full access to the front of the rebate here. Bear in mind, because it's a stopped groove, I am gonna have to be angling the saw up like this in order to avoid blasting through the front of the cabinet. Now these saw cuts are just to sort of establish the lines either side of this groove and I'm not actually going to cut to the lines yet either. I want to chisel back to them because I'm much better at chiseling than I am sawing and I'd rather work back to the lines that way. So I'm going to cut about half a millimetre away starting on the back edge like this and slowly nodding the saw forward in order to cut along the line. Now I'm watching both lines here down the front I'm almost at the line and just about to touch it at the front. I'll just do some long strokes now just to clear out any dust in the bottom of it. It's quite a long saw cut, so. Same again on the other side. Right, so now we can take advantage of the short grain that we've created within this groove because we've severed the fibers at the top and bottom. So we need a chisel that's gonna fit in there and actually that one's a bit too wide because it needs to fit between the two saw cuts. And then we'll just go in like that. And I'm taking off about four millimeters here. And it should just chip out quite nicely. Now keep in mind that these saw cuts are sloped upwards somewhat, so it is gonna be harder and harder to remove it as we get closer to this end of the groove. But for now, we'll just keep chiseling out what we can and then worry about the rest later. So I've cleaned out as much as I can following that slope of the saw cut and I've got a couple of methods to remove the rest of the waste now. I can either go in there and drill out the majority of the waste and having a stop collar on the drill that prevents you just drilling straight through the cabinet into the workbench below would be very useful or you can create a V cut with the chisel. So along here we'll go in at 90 degrees following that saw cut that we've already done and then we'll chip away at it at 45 degrees so that effectively we have a 90 degree line up against the wall and then a slope going into it. Doing that on both sides will create a peak in the middle that we can then remove once again by coming in with a chisel taking advantage of that short grain. And although drilling it out would be easier I think that's the method I'm going to go for. So lots of 90 degree cuts. Okay and then in at 45 degrees roughly. Then we'll get in there with a the smaller chisel again and remove what we can. So I've gone beveled down for this. Literally just gliding it on the bottom, chipping out whatever we can. All right, so it's looking pretty good. Just keep measuring it as we go. So we're about, okay, we're about eight millimeters there. It starts sloping up sort of like there. Okay, so let's just clean up this area and call that done. 
Yep, that all looks good to me. So we'll do a quick pencil mark there. There we go, we're all sorted from there onwards. Now we'll repeat that process again. Now I'll carefully start chopping back to those lines that I've scribed in with the knife. Where I'm about half a millimetre away from the line, I'm going to put the chisel straight into the knife marking chisel down. In some places, such as here, however, I'm about a millimetre away. So I'm going to half that distance first and then chop into the line. Right, and then as we're approaching the end, if I put the chisel straight into that line there, it's just going to split up beyond the shelf, which we obviously don't want. So we're going to chisel across the grain, but going right up to the line that way. So just like that. But we won't quite go to that line just yet. Same again this side. A little bit closer to the line. That looks good. So now we've severed those fibres at the top and bottom and we can safely chisel them out without any doing any further damage. And we'll just keep repeating that until we get to the bottom. So what we've got to do now is square off the end of the one that we did by machine in the previous lesson. Just make sure there's nothing clamped underneath it while I work on it. So again, we want to avoid putting our chisel into that line before severing the fibres, because if we hit that down, it's just going to split out beyond the shelf. So we'll go in from this way first. There we go. Chisel then goes into the line. And we'll just keep chipping out that waste. All right, so we've got the grooves cut on both components and now final job in this episode is to get the rebate cut out on the back by hand. So as stated before, using a rebate plane was something that we covered in the previous project, making a dovetail box. And that particular episode is linked in the supporting resources below. But just as a quick recap for what we covered in that video, I have taped off the blade from underneath because I'm gonna be pushing with my fingers against the fence when I'm using this and I don't wanna accidentally cut my fingers on the blade. Pushing your fingers against the fence ensures ensures that you stay in the cut and it prevents you from accidentally tracking out of it because once this plane creates a track, it wants to start following it. So you need to make sure that it's nice and straight. I'm not gonna be using a depth stop or anything in this instance because I've actually got a marking gauge line that I've scribed down the face here and I've also lined it up with the marking gauge line that I've scribed on the top. And these marking gauge lines were established in the previous episode where I showed you how to do this rebate by power tools. So we're gonna to start at the end and then gradually increase the stroke as we go so a short pass there slightly longer one slightly longer one and just keep doing that along the length of the piece I'm actually going to go for a bit of a heavier cut because I want to get this done and remember when you're using this plane put more pressure into the fence than you are pushing down on the plane the weight of the plane will take the cut for you but you need to keep it into the fence There you go, two panels complete in two different methods, one by power tools, one entirely by hand. We've only got a few more steps to carry out before gluing these carcasses together. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you found this lesson useful. If you liked the video, don't forget to press the like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left-hand side of this video. Clicking the button below will take you to the next one. I'll see you then.